I came across this beautiful hadith from the Prophet ﷺ that got me thinking about this subject. And it's an authentic hadith from Al-Bara where the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever lends an animal to someone so that they can benefit from its milk. Keep in mind what I'm saying because it's very specific for a reason. I want you to think in that society if you own a goat and you are not someone who has the means by which you can actually donate entire animals. But you have a neighbor and that neighbor wants to benefit from the milk of it at least. And you say, you know what? I'm going to lend you this animal of mine so that you can benefit from its milk for however many days. And then you can give it back to me. And Allah knows best, of course. But if you lend someone a car, you don't have the means to donate a car, but you lend them a car to get around for a few days or something of that sort, right? Some means by which you are able to benefit yourself. Even though I can't give you what I possess, you can benefit from what I possess for some time. So the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever lends an animal to their neighbor or to someone else so that they can milk it for some time, or lends them a few coins, lends them some money. Usually the scholars mention silver, so it's not even the best of currency, but lends them some money, some coins, so that they can benefit themselves with it. A small loan, so that it can get them through something in the immediate term. Or guides someone who is lost, okay? You can't give them a car, you can't pick them up, you can't house them, but you can at least guide them along the way so that they don't waste the time and energy and effort of being lost. The Prophet ﷺ said, it is as if you are freeing a slave. It is the reward of emancipating a slave. And of course, we know the great reward in Islam for purchasing the freedom of someone who is enslaved. So the Prophet ﷺ said that if you do any one of these three things, then you would have the ajr, you would have the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the freeing of a slave. We usually talk about this hadith as we should with the greatest aspiration of ithar, of selflessness and how to be selfless. And the ulama have broken it down, the scholars have broken this down, this selflessness into three categories. They say that the first level is that you give away what you don't need. You give to your brother what you don't need, the extra stuff, the stuff that's laying around in your closet, the leftover food, the leftovers of your garden. SubhanAllah, the amount of ahadith, traditions, about for example, letting the water flow to your neighbor, not cutting it off at your garden, letting it flow to your neighbor so it could irrigate their crops as well. You don't cut off the extra from your brother or from your sister. At least give to your brother or your sister what you don't need. Not even the best of what you have, not even the best of your income, the best of your food, the best of your blessings. Give them the extra. That's the first level of selflessness. The second level, مَا يُحِبُّنِي نَفْسِهِ What you love for yourself, you take things into consideration exactly as you would for yourself, for your brother. So you try to give them everything that you want for yourself. And mind you here, that Imam An-Nawi Rahimullah said, brother here is not talking about your brother Muslim, your brother in humanity. So you give to your brother in humanity exactly what you would give to yourself, what you love for yourself. And then the third level, which is the greatest level of selflessness, is that you give to your brother even what you yourself would prefer. This is the level of the Ansar, the level of the people of Medina. They prefer others to themselves. They actually preferred the Muhajireen, the migrants from Mecca, to their own selves. They gave them the better share of the house, the better share of the crop. And that was the greatest level of selflessness. Now here's the thing, when we talk about this hadith, we always go to what? We go to the level of the Ansar, as we should the most aspirational level of this hadith. However, what I'm gonna to argue today inshallah ta'ala in just a few minutes is, let's not zoom past the first category. There is a spectrum here. There's zakat, 2.5% of your wealth. And then there's Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, right? Who says it's all for Allah. I'm giving it all away. There is a whole bunch of levels in between those two, where you are sinful because of neglect, if you don't meet the first part, to a place, a level that the Prophet sallallahu would not even let the companions, the other companions reach because they did not have the iman, the faith of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. There's a lot in between there. And so this first category, the food, the extra food, your leftovers, the extra wealth, your used clothes, these things that people literally consider waste, throw away, and they could actually sustain the world as it is today. They could actually sustain the world as it is today, the things that we waste. If you go to your closet and you see things in your closet that you haven't worn for a year or two, that means you don't need it, give it away. Those things that are in your closet, if you haven't worn it for a year or two, give it away, it's time to go. Teach your children that if it's a toy that you haven't played with, I don't care how much you love it, what your game console is, you haven't played with it for a long time, give it away, let's package it. Let's give it away, let's make something special out of this. If you can afford to do so, make it a mindset that these extras for us have a lot of potential in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and can mean a whole lot 
to somebody else. Those toys that you give out there in those Syrian refugee camps, the kids are not asking what color is it and is it the latest model. It's a toy. They will line up and they'll take the toy because that toy to them is the same as an Xbox or whatever it is for your child over here. It means something else to them. And so that leftover meal for them, that leftover used dress or clothing for them, that leftover blanket, that extra food, Think always about the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. If a person would even take an animal over to their neighbor and say benefit from its milk for a few days, and that's the reward of freeing a person from slavery. And the Prophet ﷺ said to free someone from slavery is to free your entire body from the fire. SubhanAllah.